let's take a look at how to multiply a mixed number by a whole number. Multiply, simplify your answer, and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. Okay, so I have one and three quarters times 10. When you have a mixed number, meaning something that has a whole number part and then also a proper fraction part, proper just proper fraction means the numerator or top number is smaller than the denominator or bottom, it's almost always easier to rewrite that as an improper fraction, meaning a fraction where instead of having a whole number and a fraction part, we just have a fraction part and the numerator is going to be bigger because we had that whole number, bigger than the denominator. Okay, so if I have one and three-fourths, to turn this into an improper fraction, I would say one times four is four, plus three is seven, so I could write this as seven over four. Now, if I did that a little too fast, let me, let me show you my thinking a little bit. Basically, what I'm saying is when I have that whole number of one, well, if I multiply that by four, that basically means another way to write one is that the whole thing, I could write that as four out of four. Right, so four out of four, of course you could simplify that to one, right? Four divided by four is one. And then I also have, or am adding to that, another three fourths. And then when I add these together, four thirds, four fourths, and three fourths, that would give me seven fourths. So that means one and three fourths has the same meaning as seven over four. Now the really quick way to do that is to say one times four is four, plus the three on the top is seven, and the denominator or bottom number doesn't change. So you can always multiply the whole number times the denominator or bottom, right? One times four is four, add the top, four plus three gives us seven, and then just keep it over the same denominator or the same bottom number. And if you think about it, this should make a lot of sense, right? Because four out of four of those, we would make that whole number of one, and then we would have another three left over out of four. Okay, so I wanna say seven out of four times 10. Now, when I'm multiplying with fractions, I always like them to both be fractions, right? So to make 10 a fraction, since it's a whole number, all I have to do is put it over one. So I can think of this as 10 over one. Okay, and now I'm gonna multiply. We were gonna multiply straight across the top or the numerator and straight across the bottom or the denominator. So in the top or numerator, seven times 10 gives me 70. And in the bottom or the denominator, four times one gives me four. Okay, and I know I can simplify this more because I have an improper fraction, right? That means the top number or the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So I could rewrite this as a mixed number. It's definitely gonna have a whole number part. So I wanna say, well, how many times is four gonna go into 70, right? You can say 70 divided by four. And okay, it's gonna go in a little more than 17 times. So my whole number is gonna be 17. Now I wanna think, well, what was four times 17? Four times 17 gave me exactly 68. Okay, I'll, I'll put a little note here. Four times 17 gave me exactly 68. So that was most of the 70, right? 68 of that became the whole number 17, but I still have two left over, right? 70 minus 68 leaves me with two more out of that four. So I wound up with 17 and two fourths now, two-fourths I can simplify even more. So we're going to keep that whole number of 17. And an easy way to write out your fraction, if I want to say, well, what does 2 over 4 reduce to? I know it reduces because 2 goes into both numbers, right? 2 goes into 2 and also 4. So I can think of 2 as 2 times 1, and I can think of 4 as 2 times 2. And this shows me, since I have the same number or the same factor on the top and the bottom, I can cancel my factor of two on the top with my factor of two on the bottom. So two over four reduces two or has the same value as one over two. So that's my reduced final answer, 17 and one half.
Now notice there was a lot of steps here. So the key to a problem like this is taking your time and working through all the little steps instead of trying to rush and just quickly get to the final answer. Especially with fractions, you just wanna take your time and think it through. So 17 and 1 half. Okay, this time we have 8 and 1 third times 2. Okay, well just like I did before, my first step is to take this mixed number and turn it into an improper fraction. So I'm going to say 8 times 3 is 24, plus the 1 on top is 25, so that would be the same thing as 25 over 3. Now if you like to show that in between step, you can say, well, 8 times 3 is 24, so that means I could write 8 as 24 over 3, and then I still have another 1 over 3, so altogether, 24 plus 1 is 25 out of 3. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2. Now, as a fraction, I can think of 2 as 2 over 1. And our rule is to multiply straight across the numerator or top and multiply straight across the denominator or the bottom. Okay, so on the top, 25 times 2 is 50. And on the bottom, 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, now I know I can simplify this or write it in a different way because it's not considered simplified to leave an improper fraction, right? Meaning the top number is bigger than the bottom. That's why they told me to write it as a proper fraction or a whole or mixed number. So I can definitely write this as a mixed number because 3 goes into 50. So how many times does 3 go into 50? Well, let's see. It's going to go in 16 whole times because 16 times 3 gives us 48. Okay, so if 16 times 3 is 48, that's really close to 50, right? So 3 goes into 50 16 times, but it's not even, right? It has, still has 2 left over. 50 minus 48 leaves us another 2 left over out of that 3. Okay, now I can't simplify 2 over 3 because 2 times 1 is the only factors for 2 and 3 times 1 are the only factors for 3. So I'm going to leave my answer just like that, 16 and 2 thirds. nine and three quarters times eight. Okay, well our first step, we wanna rewrite this mixed number as an improper fraction. So I'm saying to myself, nine times four, that gives me 36. So I can think of this nine as being 36 over four. And then I still need to add the extra three out of four. Well, 36 plus three is 39. So I'm gonna write this as 39 out of 4. Okay, and then I want to multiply by 8. I can think of 8 as being the same thing as 8 over 1. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could multiply these numbers exactly the way they are, right? I could go straight across the top and straight across the bottom and then simplify. But when you notice like 4 and 8, for example, share a factor of four. If you simplify it before you multiply, it's gonna make your math a little easier because then you're multiplying with smaller numbers instead of making this a really big number and then still having to reduce it back down. So I can simplify that at this stage and I can say four goes into four one time and four goes into eight two times. So when I multiply, I'm gonna think of this as 39 times two over one times one, and that's just gonna make my work a little bit easier, right? I'm always looking for the easiest way to do this. Okay, so 39 times two, that's gonna give me 78, 
And on the bottom, one times one is gonna give me one. Okay, well anything over one means that that could be a whole number. So we could write that as just 78. Nine times three and one third. Okay, well let's take this three and one third and rewrite it as an improper fraction, right? Just meaning the top number is bigger than the bottom number. Okay, well three times three is nine, plus the one gives me 10, so I can write that as 10 over three. And if that was a little too fast, again, you can say, well, three times three is nine, so that means I could write this as nine thirds, right, for the three, the whole number part. And notice nine divided by three is three, right? So those are the same. And then I also have one more third, so all together, 10 out of three. Okay, and I'm multiplying that by nine, and remember I can write that as nine over one. Now the order doesn't matter, I kept it the same if you wrote nine times one over here, all the same. Now, I can multiply straight across the numerator and denominator the way that they are, but remember in the last problem, we said if you notice that there's a common factor on the top and the bottom, it helps to simplify it first because then we're working with smaller numbers. Well, nine and three share a factor of three, right? Three goes into three one time, and three goes into nine three times. So I can make my math a lot easier by thinking of this as three times 10 over one times one. Well, three times 10 gives me 30. On the bottom, one times one gives me one. And then remember, when it's over one, that means it's a whole number. 30 divided by 1 is just 30. Six times five and one quarter. Okay, well let's take this five and one quarter and we're gonna make it an improper fraction. So five times four is 20 plus the one makes it 21 over four. And again, you can say five times four is 20. That means you can write the five as 20 over four. And then of course you still have to add that extra one fourth and that's where this is coming from, right? 20 plus one is 21 and it's all over four. And we're gonna multiply that by six. Of course, to make a whole number a fraction, I can simply put it over one. So I'm gonna think of that as six over one. Okay, and we're gonna multiply straight across the numerator. We're gonna multiply straight across the denominator. Now, if you multiply the numbers the way they are, no big deal. But again, I like to make my math as easy as possible. So I like to simplify first, so I'm working with smaller numbers, and then it's gonna be easier for me to simplify at the end as well. Well, I know six and four share a factor of two. So I can write four, right? Two goes into four two times, and two goes into six three times. So I can think of this problem as three times 21 over one times two. And now when I multiply across, three times 21 gives me 63, and one times two gives me two. Okay, well how many times is two gonna go into 63? Well, it's gonna go in 31 times. Now think about this, right? 31 times two would be 62, right? So I'm basically just saying, well, the next smallest even number, right? Even numbers divide by two, 63 is odd. So the next smallest even number would be 62. Well, 62 divided by two would give me 31, right? Half of 62. So this was 62 divided by two, right? Or we could say 31 times two is 62. So 63 was one number bigger than that. So after I have my whole number of 31, I'm still gonna have one left over out of that two. So 31 and a half.